Hi guys, it's Lori at Ardent Designs. Today I'm going to show you how to do some package design and while your customer may be putting these things directly on the package and just designing a package, they may also be doing label design. So just like a sticker that goes on and I'll show you what I mean here. This is a site called Sticker Mule and you'll see that they have different kinds of labels here. This one's long and rectangular. This one kind of wraps around and if it's hard to see, but this one is actually cut in the shape of this this vector here, this uh, hops. So that's pretty cool. These are you know price ranges, and if you they have templates. So if you need to know what your uh, die lines are, if your customer needs to know where to go to get these things, this is where you would go, and you could download this, and then you would know what your bleed lines are and and so forth. So let's get started. So as I've mentioned here, the customer will supply the die lines, whatever the package design is, whatever the shape that they want, they will supply that to you. So let's get started. I've got a little sketch here. I'm going to lock it so that it doesn't move. And then I'm just going to grab the pen tool. Um, I'm just going to color it black for now, color it in later. Grab these two anchor points and we're just going to even them up in the align tab here. There, nice and even. Okay, so next I'm just going to draw this little bit of wavy water in the front. Actually only going to go about halfway and then I'll just duplicate it. So I'll select this object here. I'm going to go to this tool here, reflect, click on that, and then with this star shape here, I'm going to press Alt on this anchor point. And you'll see I get a duplicate, so I'm going to make sure preview selected, 90 degrees vertical, and copy. Okay, so now we have two. Press shift, I'll make them one object. And I might just edit this just a little bit. Um, maybe push it in a little bit. Something like that. Okay. Uh, now this top piece, let's go to the uh, direct selection tool and I'm going to select these circles here, this one, and I'll press shift and select this one and I'll just pull them down a little bit so I get some nice rounding here. And then I'm going to grab this one, I'll do the same thing, round it till you like it, till it looks pretty good. Okay, um, I'm going to get rid of the photo now, so we'll go object, unlock all. And I'll just put that off to the side. Uh, I might adjust this as well. Okay. All right. So next, let's do this little icon here. We're going to grab the pen tool again. Come down to about here. I'll click on the screen. And I'll press shift so it goes nice and straight. And I'll click and then I'll press enter. Go back to the selection tool. Make sure it's selected. And we don't want fill, so let's turn that off and just make sure that the stroke is on. Okay, so we have stroke. Let's make it, let's see here. Uh, one, two, three, maybe three. And then we'll go to the stroke. I'll go four. I think five's too many. We'll go four. And then we'll go stroke menu and then we'll just round off the edges here in the, the cap in the corner. So with this stroke selected, we're going to go to effect, distort and transform, and zigzag. So let's click preview to see what happens. 
Okay, so with the default settings, you're getting a pretty heavy zigzag here. It's kind of mountainous. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to smooth it out. So that's pretty high. It's more like a wavelength, and I don't like that. So let's try 0 0.04, and then we'll click Preview again. Okay, that's pretty good. I think I'm going to go 0 0.5. That's much better. I like that. So I'll click OK. And I've got two and a half segments here. I think I'm going to make it just a little bit longer. OK. Uh, we'll go with that one. And then we're going to go Object, Expand Appearance. And then the bounding box changes to the shape of this object. We'll go Object, Expand. And then we finalize the stroke. It's no longer a stroke, it's a fill. OK, so let's make two copies by pressing alt and dragging down with the mouse yeah. and then we'll select all of them we're going to go over to this pathfinder menu align tab and I'm going to make sure that we're aligned to selection and then we'll choose this this one right here vertical distribute space okay so it should um, make it evenly spaced and I'm also going to press this one just to make sure the edges are are right. Okay, so I'm going to press. Uh, I'm going to group this object group. I select this object here. I'm going to merge it together or unite in the Pathfinder menu. Click unite, so it's all one shape now. I'll select both of these objects. I'll get the eyedropper tool, and I'll get this nice color here. You can choose whatever color you like. Now, let's see here, the arrow. Let's do that one next. Back to the pen tool. Click on the screen. Press Shift to make sure it goes straight. And then press Enter. Now again, we don't want the fill, so we'll turn that off. And let's turn the stroke on. Go back to the Selection tool. Make sure you have it selected. And we'll give it the same stroke width as this object. Actually, maybe we'll go a little less here. Yeah, we'll go three. We'll go three. Okay. So I'll go to the stroke menu and we're going to round it up. It's a matter of preference. Uh, and then I'm going to lock it. I'm going to go object, lock, selection. And the reason for that is because we're going to draw on top of it. And we don't want it to become a continuation of the line. So. By doing this, we prevent that from happening. This little piece will become just its own little line. So I've clicked on the anchor point, and I'm going to press Shift so that I get a perfect angle here. And I'll click, press Enter. So I want to turn that around. I'm going to use this tool right here, the Reflect tool. I'll click on that. And again, we'll go to this anchor point. I'll press Alt. And make sure you have vertical 90 preview copy okay so let's go to the select tool I'm going to select both of those and I'm going to press alt to make a copy I'm going to put it about there and I'm going to copy it again right there I'll move that down a little bit Okay, so object unlock all. And move that down so it's uh, not as tall. Maybe like that. All right, so I'm going to finalize this by expanding it. Click Expand, click OK, make sure Fill and Stroke is selected. And then I'm going to uh, unite it in the Pathfinder menu. Um, Pathfinder menu, Unite. All right, go to the Select menu, and I'm going to want to rotate this. So I'm going to press Shift, and then I'm just going to turn it with my mouse all 
Okay, so let's use rotate. Press enter to get the box on the screen and let's try 45, click preview. That'll work. I'll click, uh, I'll click OK. And then I'll select this object. And let's see if I can rotate it this time. I'll press Control C, Control F. All right, that worked. Now I'm going to group them by pressing Control G. That's your shortcut for group. Now this object is actually going to want to be white because we're going to put it on a green, greenish blue background. So let's make that background. Let's grab the rectangle tool. And come to about there. Now what I want to do is put an extra node in the center here. So we'll go to the, underneath the pen tool, we have an add anchor point tool. Let's do that. And if you hover here, you should be able to find the center point. That's where we want to put our anchor. So we'll go to the direct selection tool. Let's grab this anchor here. We'll just move it up with the arrow. All right, something like that. We'll grab this uh, rectangle tool. Let's create a rectangle. Okay. Spacing this to match this object here. Okay, so we need some text now. So Norwester is a font that you probably have. It's a nice rugged font, which, you know, for an island, it's it's a good choice. I like this one. It's, it's, um, it's actually good for sport logos too. Uh, I particularly like this S here. Now this here is Brandon, Brandon Grotesque. And what's neat about this font, if you see the edges here, very cool how it's rounded off, and that's what makes it so special. Okay, now we'll get our text tool. Let's click. All right, and this one, actually, let's change the font first. Come down to the text here. I'm going to give it some spacing. Whoops, wrong way. That's pretty good. All right, I'll go with that. And text again. make a copy by pressing alt and the thing about these die lines here which your customer will supply to you so you'll know what size your document is and how much of a bleed line you'll need 
uh, according to the, the, the printer specifications. The thing about that is, is you need to make sure that your text is within these safe lines, okay? see here coffee co all right one more Okay, looks like we're done here. So let's get rid of these um, guides. I'll just delete them. <clears throat> so if you had this on a different document, so for example, if you used uh, the printer specifications, it would be on a different, a different layer in your layers panel. Um, make sure that you hide it or delete that layer. Okay, always get rid of the guides. Don't send that to the printer. It'll just cause problems. Let's get rid of this stuff. So it's important to note that um, the document that you would send to the printer is actually this, this here. But what you would present to your customer would be a PSD file. There's the problem. Okay. All right, much better. So let's select this whole thing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna drag it. We're gonna press Control C to copy it. Control C is copy. And we're gonna drag it directly into Photoshop. Okay, so this is a mock-up. It's a free PSD that you can find on the internet. Make sure that when you find one of these things that you actually have the right to use it commercially or just pay the, the five or six dollars that they want. Anyways, so here it says edit me and you have this little, little square here. Let's click on this and it takes you to another file which is like the back end. So you'll see that this is a PSD file and this is a PSB file. So while we're here, we're gonna press Control V as in Victor to paste. And we'll get this box pop up. It says smart objects, we'll click okay. Okay, so there it is. And you can either right click and press place or you can just go up here, file, save, and it'll say, do you wanna place the file? You say yes. Okay, so it's saved and placed. Now we go back to our PSD file and there it is. Now this, uh, this particular PSD comes with a background. Now you can use their background, but it's, it's, not, it's nothing fancy. It's uh, pretty boring actually. So you can turn that on or off and just export it uh, as a PNG and then present it with your own nicer background uh, as it may suit your customer a little more. So that is the end of the tutorial. If you do like the tutorial, please hit like and subscribe and thank you for watching.